Hey everyone, it's Grixon. It's been a little bit since I've done a video. Let me turn this down a touch bit more. It's been a little time since I've done a video, actually. I've been pretty busy. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do a 21. It was a 22, but yeah, it just didn't go so well. The 22 just didn't go well, and uh, retry as a 21 with different people, and it worked way better. So this is the best case you can do. You invis skip here. The lock does this. This is the best. That's the that's the skip you want if you can do this. So I told everybody beforehand, make sure you're communicating as a tank. I'm going to grab all this and the LT at the same time. And I said, just use all your cooldowns here. We're not lusting because we need all of our lusts for bosses because it's tyrannical. So, yeah, everything you can do here. AMC is great. Any kind of grips, stuns you can do. I've already I've already done my tar and stomp, so I can't do that. Um, everything possible. Uh, the problem is, is I should have I should have communicated even farther and said me and shaman will take care of all LT kicks. That would have been great because people are saving their kicks for things. Uh, I, I didn't do that. I should have. Um, yeah, so now I'm kind of starting to kite around because it is Sanguine Week. So, you know, the LT is not affected by the Sanguine, but the melee who are trying to DPS them will be affected by it. You know, you know what's going on here? I almost say you know what I mean. So, as a, as a rule, you want to start kiting. I'd say when things are, you know, they've got like 15% HP. You know, it's, 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 it's loose. It's open to interpretation. But somewhere around there, you want to start kiting. It's to start kind of moving around so things don't just drop puddles. As a DK, we, ha we have a c so much control over this. So uh, it's a very comfortable week for me. I went with Anthea just to be like, as, I mean, Blood DKs aren't meta, but I went as as meta of Blood DK I possibly could. I probably could have picked Kyrian or something like that for more single target damage than me. That actually might be a good. Uh, that actually might be a good idea. Kyrian's looking pretty good for 9.2. Uh, to my dismay, I'm not a big fan of Kyrian, but yeah, that, that might be an interesting thing to pick. So I'll spoil this key for you. We, if you don't want to hear this, close your ears or plug your ears, whatever you do. If you have a headset on, rip it off right now. Uh, we time this key with like five seconds left. And if Archie was playing as Priest, I don't know if that would have happened. Because there's sometimes an Archie, like, you can't see my hand right now, but he goes up there in damage. He he has a couple spike moments where he goes pretty high up. And, um, you know, the argument there is his Priest would have been able to give our highest DPS, you know, uh, power infusion. I, I, I don't know. Having an extra kick in this dungeon is great. And um, having capacitor totem is great. There's a lot of nice things that a uh, shaman brings. The keys in general, like they're just a very solid healer. They're probably my favorite healer. They put earth shield on you, they riptide you, and then you're pretty much good to go. Like you, that's pretty much all they need for you. Aside from maybe like a major cooldown or something. So I already told him to go to the next LT. He's already running there. Group's pretty on point. The only thing that I can complain about the group is everybody was on point. Everybody's doing good. The only issue, damage was a bit low. Damage is paramount on tyrannical keys. That's why, I, I don't know. Tyrannical keys seem like they're the hardest to time. It's purely because of damage. Their tyrannical keys are way easier for me to tank. I can tank a pretty high tyrannical but is the damage, you know, the random DPS we grab, are they good enough to keep up with it pretty much? Yeah, you know, you could argue I have some times of indecision, which could lead to some mess ups, but not being in a direct line of communication kind of sucks. You know, with, at least I have a healer that I play with all the time. Like, I know a lot of people don't have that luxury to just play with a healer. 
Hmm. I also have a, a couple other tanks in the work. Um, I'm still going to be, don't worry guys, I'm still going to be maining Blood Decay in 9.2. But uh, like, you know, I'm finishing up a Demon Hunter right now. I'm working on my bear. I have a warrior, but I, I didn't like warrior that much to be honest. So I do have some tanks. I don't think you'll ever catch me on Monk. I, I just don't think you'll see it. Nothing, nothing against monks. If you play monk, great. It's just, it's not really the fantasy I, I, I like. Like, I really like paladin gameplay, but I don't really like the fantasy of being a paladin. I don't know. I would love to have a shield. It would be so cool if Bloody Keys had a shield, but I don't think that would ever happen either. Because we only have two tanks with shields. Just warrior and paladin. <laughs> I miss back in Wrath when we could go frost dk dual wield tank that was pretty cool it wasn't viable in like super late game but it was still really cool for dungeons and just smashing things hitting things with hard howling blasts so it'd be cool to see a dual wield oh i guess we do have demon hunter right and monk <laughs> okay you know i should just stop talking don't expect to one phase this fight on tyrannical on a higher key Okay, we have lust out. I really wish more people would have popped cooldowns while the lust is going. But I understand they're trying to. It's just we're wasting lust when they don't pop anything there. But, I mean, it worked out. Everybody popped all their cooldowns. But the DPS is just not that high. Like, I don't know. And you're, a 21 is kind of low, I guess, for big, big people. But... You know, you know, now we're starting to get up to 15k single target as affliction. But really, I wish the Shadow Priest would have been up to like 18k. Like, they're perfectly capable of going up to 18k on that part of the fight when he takes increased damage. You know, it's just small things like that. Like, the DPS is overall a bit low. Even though they handled mechanics well. Even though they kicked, interrupted, and everything was great about them. It was just the actual damage wasn't super high. This key in particular is hard on Tyrannical because it's a very short dungeon and less timers are very crucial and on Tyrannical they just eat up so much time. This boss eats up a lot of time and so does the uh, Mist Caller. If you just take a long time with the maze or you're unlucky in the maze, that's just going to be a lot of time. And we did a pretty big skip, so we have to make up that count. So we're gonna have to do a few miss pulls. So this is the awkward part of this fight. When you move out of the, t uh, the blue swirls and then this tree guy takes a long time to walk over there. All right, so another big DPS phase. Like, I mean, if he's taking 200% increased damage, I, 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 I don't think I would be unreasonable to see 18k. I don't think it would be unreasonable to see pretty high. I guess I don't play a lot of damage, I wouldn't know, but I don't know. I feel like if I was playing Frost and then I did Breath of Cindergosa and all of my cooldowns right there, I feel like I would go up pretty high. Easy peasy. Little trick I like to do, I like to put an icon over this miss caller. Because I like to see where she goes. If you follow where she goes, then you get to uh Yeah, so I know she went she went back and then to the left. So if you go you don't have to do the maze right here. You know that she went back. That's that's the right way to go. If you follow where she went, you'll be fine there. I'm just going to mute it. My daughter was in the... 
My daughter was awakened in the background. It was really cute listening to her play, but it's going to be distracting for this. Now, see, there's sanguine healing going on, and I don't even see it. It's so hard to see sanguine in this dungeon. So they're just getting healed right now. This is like the biggest blunder I make, and then I step in it too. Sanguine Iker did, what, 19k heals a second? That was totally me, and... Yeah, I just I just flubbed that one up. The rest of the dungeon, I feel like I do a much better job because that was like the eye opener of oh crap, I forgot. Sanguine is like this really dark purple in this dungeon. I wish they would make it better contrast in this dungeon because it's just so hard to see. I don't know. If you guys have issues with Sanguine in this dungeon, let me know in the comments because it sucks. And it isn't like hard. It's just you can't see it. In the middle of a fight with a bunch of stuff going on, you just can't see it. Okay, so we know it's this way, because that's where the the mist caller went. And then she went back to the left. So my indecisiveness on this will be, is she up the ramp in front of me or to the right of me? Your boy Grixon's damage, not too bad. Wow. Warlock, though, going pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't see any huge, huge spikes of damage. Really, the Warlock carried this for them. And he didn't even do, like, insane DPS for most of the dungeon. It just was higher than everybody else. So right here, I was like, oh, crap. I know she went to that, so it's one of those two. I'm like, it's one of those two. So, you know, let's just use our brain for a second. It's like a four flower. That one's a circle with a leaf. They've got a leaf and then that. So it's gonna be the one with the circle. It has to be, nothing else has a circle. So we'll just take it. That's right. Unfortunately, the indecis indecisiveness made us lose our bone stacks. So we'll stomp, we'll capacitate our totem, just use everything. Now I have this nifty little interface where I can see where the next one's going to be. It's a weak aura. The problem with this weak aura is if you pull through the mist, it stops working. But mine's really old. It even says no more pride end at 52. You know what I mean? Like it's old. I should probably shop for a new one, but it's been working. So I haven't been changing it much. Oh man, I'm just getting smacked around. So now we're just worried about, you know, sanguine. As things start to get low, we just start to move. So I'm kind of hugging this wall and just kind of backpedaling a little bit to the side. Things are getting pretty low. And now we just start moving. Boom, easy. If something starts casting or gets stuck in it, we just grip him out. He's fine. Good. And um, this weak order gives you where it is in relation to where you came through. So this will be straight, straight ahead. It doesn't change based on where you're facing currently. I don't know if any of these weak ores are smart enough for the double pull to keep working. Maybe there are. Because mine's from season one. This is an awkward mini boss for, for us. We want to stay out of Tongue Lash because we can zone it out. And then he's doing all this poisonous clown stuff. and It wasn't great. Thankfully, our, our trinket was able to just keep ticking on him, but so we still did pretty low damage. <laughs> All right. Boom. I really like... I've been playing so many other covenants that 
man, you just miss that old fashioned classic, good old swarming mist. It's so much threat. It's, it's just threat isn't an issue if you're playing Venthyr. Everything just gets everything just gets blanketed with a lot of damage. Little Gorfine's Grasp, get him out of that. I just walk right into this one because I'm not good at video games. Alright. They all die relatively quickly. I still grip them out just to be safe. So here I say pull through the mist because this is what you can do, especially if you want to get better count. I look, we still have a minute on bloodlust. So why fight the boss before we have bloodlust? Let's grab some more count. You can pick and choose between all the mists which one you want, but this one was probably the worst because it's got two guardians and a shaper, but that's just a lot of bucking rampages from the guardians. I'm just worried about Sanguine. I don't know how quick people are going to burst this stuff out, you know. But no one is bursting it out because everybody's saving cooldowns for the boss. Because they know, you know, they know that they're going to have lust for it. So unfortunately, this ends up being kind of a, a bigger deal. It's just taking longer than it should have. Fucking Rampage. So I have my Asphyxiate on a mouse over. I'm gonna turn that off, I hate that. I always end up doing the wrong thing because I feel like it's just grip on a mouse over is completely fine, but I can't do Asphyxiate on it. I gotta get rid of that. Okay, let's goes out, people pop cooldowns, I guess. I don't know. Shadow Priest is doing big damage there, but that's really it. I need to add Afflictions big cooldowns. So I do make a mess up here, and it's something I haven't done in a long time, but I actually miss a patty cake, and, and I die. It almost cost the key. It was so close to costing the key. This one. I freaking miss the patty cake. And then I res, I res in to a, a Vulpin. It was like, oh no, oh no. Such an easy mechanic and after that I'm like super on top of it. Yeah, I couldn't believe I did that. Yeah, just be mindful of that Vulpin and try and keep your melee away from it because any AoE abilities will hit them. Break the CC. You gotta use your brain for a couple seconds to get this correct. Usually a DPS will figure it out for you, but sometimes they don't and you have to, as the tank, like, be the fearless leader. In a mythic, if you do the wrong one, it's pretty much game over. So I think I, correct me if I'm wrong if you guys know, I think if you get tornadoed up in the air when he does the uh, dodgeball, I think you actually jump over the dodgeball. I don't think it hits you if you're in the air. Because I think I, I think I jump over it on, on uh, the next guessing game. So yeah, this fight is long. I would have liked higher DPS, but I know that's like 
such a small thing. See, I didn't know which one it was at first. I had to kind of think. Turned around, interrupted. This one, I think I, I think I dodge, the dodge ball. Boop, right there, I jumped over it. Pretty sure I jumped over it. Unless it just didn't hit me that hard. All right. Yeah, excuse the language here. I know this one isn't my best commentary, but if you guys like the videos, uh, it'd be great if you could hit the like button. I appreciate that. You don't have to sub to me or anything like that. Like I'm not, I don't know. Like I know I'm already grabbing as much as it is. I'm already reaching, but if you like the video and if you have any questions commenting, it's plenty fine. And uh, if you don't want to, if you thought this was like a bad video, by all means, like no obligation. You do you. Swarming Mist just so good right here. Getting everything together and making sure you don't lose aggro. So the, the real scary part of this is, so this is the real scary part is, if one of these things die and then Sogodon pulls you into Sanguine, it's a bad time. So you have to be very mindful here. This is a very scary part of the key. And actually a couple people are in Sanguine right there. So I'm just trying my best in between this to get these guys away from it. So I have to kind of still kite here. All right, and then now we're good. So might not be the best idea in Sanguine Wing to pull him with the stuff. And in fact, it might be best just to not even take him. It probably would have been better to skip him altogether and then done like a, like a triple pull up here. If I could have pulled those three in with the other big pull I do, I think it would have gone better. I mean, Sanguine was minimum, but still. Okay, we grab that. Then we grab this. I, I quickly come over here and refresh bone chill stacks. You guys know I always talk about bone chill stacks, so important. Pop our trinket, make sure we have aggro, take a big smack to the face, make that our focus kick, so we can always kick it. My plater colors profile always shows you which ones need to be interrupted. It's gonna be purple. If it has a purple bar, you know it has to be interrupted. So now I'm just trying to, yeah, just trying to make sure I have enough, have enough for death strikes. So if I have a death and decay going on, I try and put some heart strikes in. Dancing rune weapon came up, so I have a higher parry chance right now. I'm gonna put it down. Things are dying quick, so I have to keep kiting. Get them out of sanguine when we can. All right, now we're gonna start coming back and use this gate. I don't know why I decided to keep running back. I think I was trying to reposition a little bit. But I'm going to use this gate now. Because we're running out of time. We need to go fast. Focus kick, the purple. And uh, I'm using a plater profile from Dark Mech, actually. I've, I've tweaked it, made it my own. I made the bars smaller, not so wide, but I like that it really highlights who your target is. You know, as a blood decay, one of the scariest things is targeting something far away from you and then you can't death strike it and you die. So this was my attempt to combat that to where I can always kind of tell what I have. Okay, I'll just leave that guy out there. It's fine, he'll just come as he goes. Double, I always double pull this. This is always a double pull. There's nothing that has to be kicked, so you don't have to really worry. I'm going to have Swarming Mist for it and Trinket, so easy double pull. 
get everything close. Drink it. Something. Oh, the Ravager died right there. That kind of sucked. Dropped a puddle there. But after that, that's fine. People pop cooldowns. People had stuff ready. And then I, I stomp. Try and do what we can. Two second stomp isn't significant, but it isn't. It's not nothing. You know what I mean? Like it can, ah, uh, you know what I mean? It can stop a, a cast. It can do a lot of stuff. So those are almost all dead. I still have to worry about time. So we're going to we're going to pull again. We're we're looking at lust timer. We still need a minute for lust. We still need count. So we're gonna go do count while the lust timer ticks away. If you still don't have lust ready, you should just do this. You should just, like, don't fight the boss until you have lust if you can help it. You have a little bit of extra time to spare before. I know it was extra count that we needed, but we're still waiting on lust anyways. Like I, in retrospect, I should have pulled these in with the boss, but I was afraid of Sanguine. I'm pretty sure this would heal the boss. Asphyxiate that one so it dies away from this one. Never gets into the uh, puddle. Start carrying this one over. I was going to chain it into the boss, but it's like, yeah, no, Sanguine, let's not do that. So I let it die out here and then pull immediately. Less is up in 13 seconds. This warrior probably could have waited the 13 seconds for Lust. All right, it's up. It's up there. Oh, there it is. Archie was busy doing some damage. So it's burning pretty quick right now. But it does slow down quite a bit, and the uh, warrior does go down. So I have to battle resum. Fury Warrior does seem really cool to play. Like, it's the only class that can dual wield two handers. Man, that's pretty freaking baller. You know what I mean? Like, that's rad. Uh, but unfortunately, like they're fine. They do decent damage, but I, I love rogues. They just bring so much to a mythic plus situation that I I just a warrior can never mimic that. And a good war a good rogue can do great damage too. But it is pretty dope to be dual wielding two handers. Look at man, this guy's. Playing DDR right now. Look at him. Doo, 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 doo. All right, I just mass grip them over to the boss. Trying to help cleave. Poor guy is just trying to horrify and keep it off of him. I grip it in, but it just takes me a bit. So time is definitely chunk, and these larvae are, are pretty hard. Thankfully, he's able to tank it pretty well with the uh, the rock alley. So I'm trying to get this stuff off of him. But I'm out of a lot of cooldowns, too. I could have used my potion earlier, my phantom fire potion. I end up not using it until pretty late when I'm like oh crap we're about to not time this because I see he's got my larva coming so I'm going to use swarming mist and trinket on it but I mean at this point I need to just focus boss hard I've got a link going on it's just it's slowing us down we're we're not doing enough damage to the boss I mean 8.6 8.3 7.2 is pretty low on this boss. 
so yeah i popped my potion whatever it could so five seconds to spare and we time it 10 points because mine was actually at 20 untimed all right i appreciate you guys watching the key if there's something you guys would like me to talk more about or explain in the next key uh, leave a comment about it if you want to know more about rotation or you know anything if you're newer blood dk and you're trying to get into the class please any questions i'll answer i read all youtube comments and if you'd like me to talk about something in a video don't hesitate the next video i do i'll keep it in mind and i'll talk more about it like hey i like to see more about rotation no problem i can do that i like to see more about this or that i can do that so i hope you guys have a good day thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next one